Hello, everyone. And I'm really happy to hear about the Dean Taylor Awards doing floras. That's great. So this session is talking about local floras, focusing on um, uh, just a few countywide floras and the methods that we use to do that, which has changed over the time, but more efficient now. We can generate a flora much more quickly. And also related to that is how do we figure out which species in a county are rare locally, called locally rare species. These are two programs that I worked on uh, while at CMPS. And some of these projects um, occurred long before that program actually ever got started. So you'll hear about four different floras. Um, and I'll start with mine, talking about Ventura County, which is actually Southern California. Uh, but we'll use it as an example of how we can help identify locally rare plants. First of all, about me, I'm David Magny. I am a principal at Alt House and Mead now, which is a consulting firm based out of Paso Robles. I've been an environmental consultant for most of my career since the mid 80s. Um, worked for a number of different firms, had my own firm for many years, and now I'm at Alt House and Mead. I've been involved in CNPS for many years until last year, and various positions and uh, mostly volunteer leadership. Um, I was chapter president of the Challenge chapter for 11 years. You can't let that happen. You've got to find somebody new. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to talk about the methods to develop a locally rare plants using Ventura County flora as an example for that. So the first thing is, you know, why focus on locally rare plants? And to, for regulations that support consideration of locally rare plants in CEQA. So this is really important for the conservationists in you and those environmental consultants um, to take this in consideration when you're doing environmental assessments. Uh, identify some de definitions of what qualifies as locally rare plant. Uh, methods to determine which taxa qualify and methods and tools to develop a list of locally rare plants and use a case study of Ventura County. So the purpose here is to encourage botanists to develop local county floras. And there's a, a lot of work that needs to be done. There's a lot of work that has been done. Uh, we want to develop definitions of locally rare plants using existing definitions whenever possible, not inventing something new that somebody will then challenge. Oh, how, what, what criteria do you use that? Where'd you get that? Uh, develop lists of locally rare plants for every California county so that we can uh, do conservation. You have to know what you have in your local area. And use those, locally, those lists of locally rare plants to help conserve them at the local, floor, local level. And generally at the county level because all land use decisions, or almost all of them, are made at the county government level or in the cities. And so you have to, and, and those entities uh, have to regulate the act, they have to protect the botanical resources in their area of jurisdiction. And so that's why we focus on the county level. So we know that the botanical resources in California are at risk. That's why we want to do this. We have to have, know what we've got. Uh, development uh, coming from developments that conflict with the plant's well-being. Uh, climate change is affecting our flora. Uh, and land and habitat mismanagement. We want to provide tools for conservation by having criteria to, develop, to determine which species are rare and identifying locally rare taxa and educating the public and uh, policymakers. Uh, this is just a summary of the current, it actually needs to be updated, but uh, uh, California floristic work. Uh, this is based on uh, Jim Smith's uh, 2010 uh, assessment of looking at all the floristic studies in the, in the state. Those areas that are in blue have countywide floras that are published at some level. All the yellow are counties that have no countywide floras. The numbers in them are the number of floristic studies in each of those counties. And you'll see that there are three counties that have no floristic studies. So 
if you've got something you need to do, you want to, you have some free time, focus on one of those counties that has zero and do something. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So definitions. So let's go back to the regulation component of this. Our really only conservation law that we have on the books in California is the general plan law. How many knew that? Very few, that's right. The general plan law is what sets um, counties have to identify uh, policies to conserve and protect the botanical and biological resources within their area. Every county has to have that. They have to have conservation policies to do that. And CEQA, what we often think is the law to protect our resources is just an assessment. It's just a process of identifying which biological resources will be affected by a project. It actually does nothing really to protect it. The general plan law does into those policies. And I'll point out a couple policies for Ventura County later that shows that. But in the CEQA assessment, you actually have the ability to look at locally rare species in there. It's in Appendix G, and they, they, they say locally significant or have various words for that associated with that. And I'm in determining which species are locally rare using a five or fewer uh, extant populations as the primary, primary criterion. And that is parallel to what NatureServe uses um, nationwide. All 50 states uses the same system. Therefore, we have ju um, uh, justification and practice to um, back up why we were choosing a threshold of five or fewer. It relates to the G1, S1 uh, rarity rankings. Oh, and just as a side on that, California is a large state, Ventura County, where the case study here is 1% of the size of, of California. So some people say, well, that's just too small of an area. Rhode Island is half the size of Ventura County, yet they use the same system. Therefore, we can justify using this system to, to even counties even smaller than Ventura County. So methods to use to compile a flora this is the most basic work, is you have to obtain a local flora uh, or you're going to do the follow. So if somebody's already published one, like David Keel for San, San Luis Obispo County, or you're going to have to figure it out what's in the county if one has not been published. So there are a number of different methods to do this, and I'll just go through some very simple ways to do it. Uh, one is you can download all the vouchers that are deposited in public area through using the CCH in California uh, the Consortium of California Herbaria, uh, and just say, hey, show me all the vouchers that occur in Ventura County, which I have done that. Uh, there are over a million uh, vouchers uh, in the CCH H database. Now, recognize that not all tax, uh, not all vouchers that are in Herbaria are on the, in the database and on CCH. So there's a lot of specimens that are not even in there yet. So there's still a lot more data, uh, a lot more occurrences that need to be um, uh, entered into the database. But it's a good start. Uh, you can also access um, observations and other um, observations uh, through CalFlora, iNaturalist. Uh, if you have access to the Forest Service database, there's NRIS. Uh, those are all valuable, but they're not necessarily voucher-based. They may be, but they're not necessarily. And then you can create a simple checklist of all the plants recorded for the county. Uh, and you compile a preliminary annotated checklist for that county by then pairing those voucher, those voucher specimens with that, that list. And here's an example of a search just for Ventura County. All those dots will represent one of the voucher specimens. And then there's a long list that you can go through. The CCH online publication tool is another way you can actually publish your list. If you've downloaded that, you can then an, um, uh, publish it on, uh, for any of your areas, any size areas. Here's some that have already been created. Uh, for example, there's four uh, checklists for California state parks. There's three California-wide taxon lists. 
There are five county floras. Ventura County is one of those. Um, and there's a Cal State University Natural Reserves. There's two. There are 11 local floras in sub-county or may cross a county, maybe a watershed or something like that. Um, and then there are 19 California na uh, national parks within California uh, checklists, uh, seven UC natural reserve system checklists, and another 37 miscellaneous checklists. So there's already some here, and the beauty of it is free and readily available to anybody. So just go to CCH2 and go to checklists, and you can see, download a list. You can also add to it yourself. So uh, field methods to develop a local floor is one, review the database of existing voucher collections and observations, uh, and it's best if you use it into uh, GIS software so you can actually see the distribution. Uh, having a visual tool uh, to see where vouchers occur is really helpful. Uh, and then select bioregions. Uh, for Ventura County, I divided the county into 54 different bioregions, basically following uh, mountain ranges or valleys and, or plains and things like that, just so I can see where plants are distributed. And then I select those bioregions that ha have been poorly collected or underrepresented or just have a few number of species. Okay, why? Uh, and then go identify areas that I need to go out there and survey to fill out that. And uh, then using either electronic devices like a handheld GPS unit, uh, you can identify exactly where you are, uh, and you can use other online um, uh, electronic devices like um, uh, Esri's Arc Collector or Survey123 or similar applications. Uh, at Althaus and Mead, we use Amigo Cloud. Uh, and you can record your observations, um, whatever your survey area is. Um, I often set a point and have a 10 meter or, um, uh, area that I list all the plants. Uh, so far, we've got about 1,300 plots in Ventura County with over uh, 25,000 plant observations. Uh, and just locally, uh, recently, we did over 2,500 vouchers in Ventura County and uh, adjacent areas since 2018. So a lot of work has been done. Uh, and this is an example of all the observations and vouchers that have been collected for Ventura County. So you want to collect the vouchers as much as you can, especially for those areas that are undercollected, and certainly note any rare species that you have and submit that to the CNDDB. Uh, estimate percent cover of dominant and characteristic species, which will help you identify what plant communities you're in. Okay, to start with a county checklist, you, you know, best checklist has location data. Even better if you've got it into a database, you determine the number of extant populations uh, for each taxon within each county. So how do we determine which ones are rare? Um, you have to know how many populations there are in the county. And so you've got those old vouchers from areas that may have been developed. So those are extra printed. So just because you have a voucher from a location doesn't mean that it's extant. So you have to go through all those vouchers and make sure that, oh, that population is still there. And we're talking about native plants. We're not categorizing those oh, that are uh, introduced to the area, naturalized. Uh, and we're using the criterion of five or fewer. So Ventura County, I talked about general plan policies. They have two. One is protection of sensitive biological resources. And the county shall ensure that discretionary development that could impact sensitive biological resources be evaluated by a qualified biologist. There's lots of stuff there. Uh, consideration of sensitive biological resources, the county shall identify sensitive biological resources. That is the, the impetus for the, the county to uh, figure out which plants are rare in Ventura County. This uh, also applies to wildlife. So in Ventura County, I started back in the 80s. My goal is to publish the flora course someday. I keep saying that every year. Um, and uh, out of that, I'm using that research to determine which species are rare in the county. The county has a developed an ordinance to actually identify which species are locally rare. And the, the botanist can then nominate species to be added to that list. Uh, 
Um, so I, I also maintain a list of uh, uncommon plants, so the five or fewer, or ten to uh, six to ten, which I call locally uncommon. And then there's a locally important uh, species that is actually formed and adopted by the Board of Supervisors uh, in Ventura County. Uh, it has two criteria, five or fewer occurrences, or, and they have to be declining throughout the range. How do you determine that? Well, with all the developments going on, it's pretty easy to say, well, we've lost a lot of different occurrences, therefore it'll satisfy that criterion. Uh, so Joventura County, uh, there's over 50,000 vouchers. I've still got about 1,000 that need to be have labels written and submitted to the uh, herbarium. Uh, lots and lots of observations uh, by myself or others, including iNaturalist. Uh, you just have to filter those iNaturalist ones to make sure they're good. Uh, we have 2,005 native taxa in Ventura County, and you can see, read about it in Ventura County Flora, VenturaFlora.com, as well as as um, Ventura County Rare Plants. All right, just for perspective, there are 6,578 native plants in California. 37% of them are considered rare in Ventura County. We have 942. We have a higher percentage that are considered locally rare than in uh, the, for the whole state. And there are reasons for that, but I don't have time to talk about that. So here, oh, let's see, back. This is a couple examples uh, showing a distribution of plants that are not rare statewide, uh, but are rare locally. So Nema demissa is one. There's only uh, a, a one occurrence in Ventura County. Plagiobothys bracteatus, widespread in California. Uh, there's only a four vouchers in Ventura County, basically in one area. Uh, Deteria canescens variety shastensa, uh, 315 vouchers, uh, only five occurrences in Ventura County in one location, and a very disjunct occurrence. And there's some locally uh, uncommon ones. And so this is the number of species, uh, a number of counties that we have locally rare plant lists developed so far. Uh, Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, uh, the Libre Mountains portion of LA County, Alameda and Costa Costa County, Napa County, Sonoma County, Santa Cruz County, San Mateo County. And you're gonna hear about San Mateo County next. All right. And then here's where you get additional, additional information. And we've got a little bit of time for questions, right? Great. Yes, I'm curious, when you're evaluating rarity, to what extent you consider the um, number of individuals in a population and the connectivity between populations? So I usually, I, I basically use the definition that the CNDDB uses. And so if a population is within a quarter mile of each other, then it's one population. So they have to be at least a quarter mile apart. The number of individuals is, is irrelevant is because we're talking about populations. Now, if you're talking about viability of it, that's a different story. And of course, an annual population can have millions of plants in one small population where you could have a perennial or a tree, you only have one. That's a very small population. But we use the basic, the numbers aren't used, the numbers in an occurrence are not really considered, except when you're doing an assessment of the impact on that. But in terms of which ones are rare locally, we're not considering the actual numbers of the populations. Good talk, Dave. Um, I'm wondering how you feel your methodology is capturing peripheral populations or disjunct populations. Clarify that question. Um, you go by a criteria of five yeah. occurrences, mm -hmm. but we know from um, meta population dynamics that sometimes per peripheral populations are very, very important genetically. Yes. And I'm wondering how, you're, how you feel your methodology is capturing that. Well, the first thing is it has to be occurred in my study area. So 
for example, the Ventura County list, it has to occur within the boundaries of Ventura County. It's possible that that population that occurs in Ventura County also extends into adjacent county. That size of the population, you know, uh, may be a factor, but the fact that it, we have a rare occurrence or a occurrence in the county, it's usually because it's at the peri periphery of its uh, distribution. And the um, uh, diteria example I gave is a huge disjunction of its normal distribution. But the habitat is similar to other occurrences throughout the state, very high elevation, subalpine. Um, but that is one of the things that we expect to find is that many of these locally rare species are probably going to be on the edge of their distribution. Dave, you mentioned uh, using uh, CCH2 uh, data and data from CalFlora and so on. Can you comment on vetting what you get <laughs> from those lists uh, because of uh, misidentifications and so on that may be uh, resulting in uh, problems. Yeah, so the first thing is uh, if you have any doubt about the identification, question it, investigate it more further. It's really nice when that specimen is, has a scan that you can look at it and there's in fact a recent one that we just looked at and I brought it up. We questioned whether or not it actually occurs in the county. Uh, it was a, um, a micranthes, I think it was, and it's like, no, it didn't, it didn't uh, look right and so I uh, sent an email over to Cal Poly, that's where it was, and Jen Yost looked at it and said, you're right, it's not that one. Um, so, yes, you need to vet them. If they seem odd, dig deeper. Uh, another consideration is you'll have, if you, just, if you just download the list of vouchers from the, a county or a certain area, you'll have many more um, vouchers than you actually have populations. You'll have multiple specimens of the same collection at different herbaria. It's the exact same collection, same collection number, same date. Um, so you don't double count them or triple or quadruple count them. You'll also have, especially in the early days, multiple collectors from the same day, all having their own. They have to have their own voucher. Um, and so you, know, you, you can imagine there were forays back in the 20s and even 1800s. They, they say, oh, we found this cool thing and brought all their friends out and they all collected it. Um, so you have to vet through for, to determine how many occurrences you have, looking at are there duplicates of the same collection or from different collectors and also different times. And so having uh, a good understanding of where those occurrences are is very important. And I got the stop button. All right. All right. 